All right, hello, hello. Uh, this this is gonna be a bit of a an unscripted video, all about my thoughts on Shatter and the Shatter changes. If you did not know, patch 6.4 changed how Shatter plays. If you've not been into PvP or didn't notice the patch notes or what, but uh, Shatter, if you've played the old Shatter, does not look like this anymore. There's a lot of similarities, broadly speaking, it's the same mode, but there's a lot of little changes, big changes, that really change the game of Shatter a lot. So before you had the three bases, you had the Tomalus that mark your base and give you some very little, but I guess, and not really all that important, uh, generation of points. Very slow, but very there. And then there's all the ice. There's like 20 small ices on the map or something like that. Probably like 21 so that it's even. But there's a number of small ices on the map. And for big ices, one mid and one in all the corners. If you've played Shattered before, you know all that. So the big thing with Old Shatter that made it kind of bad was the RNG. A big part of what people complain with PvP is the RNG aspects of, oh, uh, uh, Seas, uh, Seal Rock is very RNG based. On Sol Hakir is very RNG based because of where nodes can spawn. If you get bad nodes, you just can never win, which definitely is not the case at all. However, Shatter kind of, yeah, that it, Shatter was all, well not all RNG, but a lot more emphasized on the RNG aspect. Uh, just because, for one, this, this match, we got the worst spawn possible is all ice spawn, small ice, all small ice spawn at the same time the moment the match begins. This is probably the worst way to do Shatter. I I absolutely hated any Shatter match that had all small ice spawn because whenever small ice spawns, 90% of the match becomes team deathmatch and that can go either way. That gets really deep into the RNG aspects of how are the other te two teams going to react in this being team deathmatch now? Just because building up uh, your battle high does matter. It's not like the kills to kill sake are never like the way to win. But kills while taking objectives can very quickly lead your group to getting battle high. Especially if like a small group of the enemies breaks off from the main pack, goes to your objective, and your entire team is there. If there's like seven people... And your entire team is there, all, uh, all 26 of you. That's a very, very easy rollover. That's a very easy 140 points minimum of battle high to go around your team. And so that could massively increase your team's defense, massively increase your attack power. I'm just basically explaining PvP at the front lines at this point. But, like, usually in any other mode... Except for, I guess, uh, uh, Cardinal F Battle or Borderland Ruins. That was kind of just naturally slowly happening through the match. You would slowly build just, oh, this objective leads to a small team fight, and, you en and one team ends up getting some battle high out of it. Or maybe both teams get a total battle high increase just because it's early game and you're not losing a lot of battle high. Whereas when all small ice spawn immediately, it kind of just becomes all about just fighting, fighting, fighting. And this entire time I've been talking, ever since I got to the middle, has just been fighting the entire time. Like, no ice has spawned, no more ice has spawned since the beginning. It has just been battle, battle, and battle with nothing else. And that, that, yes, it's PvP. But it's an objective-based PvP mode. So immediately getting rid of the entire point of your mode to become Team Deathmatch 
just out of nowhere. I, I, I kind of don't see the point of that. So that's that's a big part of the RNG m massively affecting how Shadow goes. But then there's also uh, the order of when you don't get just all small ice spawn immediately, the order massively, massively, massively comes into play just because you will never... Unless, like, all teams are doing really poorly or something, I, like, I don't, I don't even know how you had, have it happen anymore, but... Unless all teams just, like, completely suck. Oh, so finally... Almost six minutes into the match, we're finally going to see the first big guy spawn. Wow. That took forever. Yeah, uh... The matches will always end early. You are never going to see all the big ice. And because the way the 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 front line the the map is set up, the northern the northern ice is massively. I'm gonna use this match as an example, just because uh, just because uh, it starting placements are random. So in this match, this northern ice. My group got to because we were quick on the draw, but this ice should have been a Maelstrom and Adder's ice because Maelstrom and Adder's both got the northern spawn locations rather than the southern one. Because each team will get two of the outer ones safely with the third one being unsafe. Also, you see me here just fleeing like, okay, the ice is done. I'm in a bad position. I don't want to lose what little battle high I do already have. I want to get back into position and maybe get a pick off or two. But uh, yeah, that ice, our team got up there just because we, we pinged, we flew right in, and we were able to get some good points off of that. That should have been mostly free for Maelstrom and Adders if they were paying attention, because the very far north of that is an escape route for the Adders that leads directly towards their base. Maelstrom is the closest team to that northern ice. The southwestern ice is uh, is like basic is the Maelstrom and uh, it's the one that's spawning. I didn't even remember that. So our ice, the Immortal Flames ice, is spawning. The Immortal Flames base is closest to this ice, and the southeast is Addis is closest to that one with Immortal Flames being the coming in from the rear. And Maelstrom has to take the middle. So this ice is a Maelstrom and Flames ice. So I so naturally, like if if ideally, like ideal conditions, PvP, you can never control players. If like everyone's paying attention, this ice is going to go to Maelstrom and Immortal Flames. So my team and the red team. You are not going to see all these big ices get spawned, like M m vast majority of matches, you will never, ever, ever see all the ice spawn. You will see three of them spawn, and maybe if you're lucky, the fourth one will spawn. Just because of how, how points go, whether or not one team is massively far behind. Like, I've had a match that has been over already. I have gotten at least one shatter, I think it was seven minutes. Or was it 11? I can't remember if it was 7 or... I don't remember, but... Yeah, no, it was 7. That one match was over... Hello, phone. One match was over just that quickly. Wait, no, that, 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 that was... Uh, that was C's. Not this one. Oh, yeah, three points there. Yeah, some matches go extremely quick if, like... One of the teams just completely throws. Like, look at the scores we already have. We already ha are coming up on the s very, very low 1600 threshold, and there's only two ice left. One ice is three. One big ice is 300 points. The small. Oh, middle is spawning. The middle is spawning. We better go. What are you doing? Oh, I guess free kill. So battle high. It's a free pick off. We'll get to mid. Just in time, just because uh, middle is the easiest one for everyone to get to because it's literally the middle. You know, most matches, 
you don't end up having that huge downtime period in the at the beginning of just waiting for the big ISIS to spawn. Usually there's objectives going on all over the place that leave you running around and just far more interesting. And then some some patterns are just it doesn't matter. You just really have it It's hard to really explain if you've not done it yourself. If you've not experienced Shatter enough, old Shatter, sometimes it can be very hard. To, like, if Maelstrom did not participate as much as they did, the match would be over. Like, if they had 200 less points, this match would probably already be over because the Flames here, would, my team, would already have the, the win. Or the Adders would have the win. Like, I think this last ice does spawn. Does it? Do we kill it? I don't remember if we get it. This is one of the few, I guess... I guess one good thing about the all smalls spawning pattern is that usually it does lead to all ice spawning and the RNG factor is far less pr pr prominent just because... Again, we are actually getting all the ice to spawn. And point totals are within 100 point of each other. Where usually there's like one team that is 300, 400 points behind and just not even... Yeah, okay, we do get all the ice. So the, the worst pattern, ironically, is the best pattern for it being a fair game. Just because there is no team, technically, that is out of it. Maelstrom's kind of out of it already at this point. Because they bungled their north and southwest ice more than anything else. This this would be their worst ice to get at. So the fact that my team is equal in points, we should be behind. Like Maelstrom should have the lead at this point. Which just shows that our play through the rest of the match has been better than the other two teams generally. Or er, Maelstrom is the worst, I mean. Like, it, it's... And he's going to be the win. Just barely living through that. We win barely just because we got the most points out of that. We got there first. We made sure to focus it. We took it down. I don't like that pattern, but ironically might actually be the fairest pattern. Where through the matches, through a normal match, it might not even be... You might not get... All, you usually won't get all the ice to spawn just because few spawn here, few spawn here, few spawn here, and it allows one team to run away with it. But also, at the same time, all ice spawning turns it into team deathmatch and way less fun. Whereas the new Shatter is going to solve that little issue. And then Shatter Remix. For one, they up the points to 2,000. Two, we got this neat little new HUD for PvP in the top. And three, look at this map. It is so different. This map is so very different. For one, ice, there's a lot less ice. That's, the map's a lot less small. It keeps a lot of the same things. But like now, this northern ice is only for, uh, for only the flames. So my team again... Wow, I, I can't believe both clips I picked were both flames. That was not intended. But, uh... This is, uh... Only for the flames, quote-unquote. Just because... They're the only other... There's only two entrances now. There's the middle entrance and the entrance to one of the bases. So now, if the other two teams want to get in, they either have to jump down the cliffs, like, uh... Like the, the, the Addis did this round and took some damage and ended up getting me. So I think the person I attacked had damage from the fall. So I got some free battle high out of that to then push on to why well, I guess I didn't have battle high one yet. That's at 20 points. But if I had gotten a second kill, that would have just made the point totals of 101 and 148 way more in our favor just because I would have had more power. Also, speaking of, they adjusted point amounts for things. Before it was 300 points for big ice, 70 for a small. Now it's only 50 for a small. But that's a lot because uh, 
Smalls were kind of way more important than bigs in the old Shatter. Now Smalls kind of are a bit less important, but still very important. Like, you do not ignore Smalls. Smalls is still going to be the majority of your points. Just because even with nodes now all respawning after some point, Smalls are going to respawn more, you're going to kill more Smalls, all that. And you usually don't have to fight other teams for them. Like here, I'm gonna go... Am I gonna go towards the big guys? I think I'm gonna help kill this small one, then go toward the big guys. But no, as you can see, all of Maelstrom is there, because that's their ice. So now everyone gets their own big ice, and the other two teams have to make some dangerous push. Okay, no, I go to the small one. Some dangerous push just to try and get a... Uh, into the big ice. So that, that feels a bit more fair just because both teams are equally at risk and not just one of the teams is at risk. No, two of the teams are at risk. Even if technically this ice is furthest away from adders, if my team wanted to get there, which my team is now all there, or was, they would have either have to jump down the cliff or go in the same path that the adders would take, which is down the middle. That massively changes your relationship with the big guys, which I find to be a good change, personally. And then I... Big part of it that I'm not entirely sure on is the RNG is definitely way more, I guess, feeling pronounced than Old Shatter, but I think it's still yet more fair than Old Shatter, just because of the way respawning works and that it all evens out. And also depends on what priorities you take. That like it, it, the big issue here is old shatter has been around for what six years was it? I forget when they added shatter. I think it came with Heaven's Word. So two years for Heaven's Word, two years for Stormblood, two years for Shadowbring is seven if we take the one year of Endwalker. By the time Endwalker ends, it won't even be one year of new shatter. So it's a bit hard to tell the difference of whether or not this is less fair, more fair. But it feels more fair, even though, like, adders are kind of getting wrecked. But, like, I've watched this, this clip before. I've watched this video. And personally, it didn't really seem like adders... Uh, got bad RNG or anything. Like, that first big ice, they came to to the big ice with us at north and got 100 points out of it. But meanwhile, they're so far behind. Even though Maelstrom had just as many big ice and yet they're way ahead. So I was like, Addis is just getting stomped this round by their own fault or ba maybe maelstrom and immortal flames are both really good teams or are just making better plays just because we're getting to the point where ice is respawning so we're already at the point of we've already made one full loop of the map and if that's and this if this is one full map rotation already this isn't an issue of rng this is an issue of just adders was playing poorly or something and that i've got i've gotten that feeling for all the matches of new shadow i've done that it's not just oh you've had to deal with the bad annoying patterns of old shadow that oh the the good ice for your team is the last one to spawn, which means if you're winning, it means your team was just extra good because you made plays towards the the more dangerous ice. Because some matches do really go that way, that, oh, the most dangerous ice spawns for, say, Maelstrom, but Maelstrom is the one that gets the most points on it, even though it shouldn't have been their ice. And sometimes that happens just because, like, Maybe they have a shot caller calling it out of, okay, we need to move, this is the ice, get moving. And people are actually listening, or a whole lot of potential uh, different 
things it could be. There's no one way to know, just because of PvP, players, all that. The different patterns it could be. There's, there's, there's a lot you just can't be sure on, I feel like. Also, Addis is still pretty far behind, but they did start to slowly catch up with the, the second phase of Ice, which really they should have been even and not so far behind anyway, but... Yeah, I, I, the RNG, I feel, is more fair. This could change over the next few years that I decide, ah, no, nah, I was wrong. I think the new RNG is just as bad, if not worse. But I feel like even though it feels more random, it is still yet more fair. Which I know is a weird thing to say. Also, I'm basically just taking this Scholar's attention because Scholar is an AoE kind of uh, job. If that Scholar went down there and helped out their team instead of fighting me, they probably could have did some major damage to the ice and my team just because of spread broil and all that. Also, I really should not be living through this. I, I made such a bad play going after the Scholar here. But for some reason, nobody's attacking me. They don't even try to attack me. Just my team made such a good push towards them that they didn't stand a chance and just ignored me. <laughs> Which just goes to show how absolutely poorly Adders is doing and how good my team is doing rather than it being anything RNG. Whereas if it was old chatter, I honestly wouldn't be able to say which version it is. Was it? Was Ada doing bad, or was it just because they got a bad pattern? I don't know, because it's old chat, but I feel very confident. I know I'm belaboring the point, like, this I mean, look at the title, it even says I, I rambled this video, but... I feel very much like... This is a lot better. I like New Shadow way better than old. Also, they raised the point cap, like... If they had kept old chatter to be old chatter, but just raised the point cap a bit, you might be hearing different tunes, like even just 100 more points. Most chatter matches would see all ices in the old one, even just 100 points. But now it's 2,000, which seems like stupidly high. And, but, especially when you consider that now, instead of 300 a big ice, it's 250. Smalls is 50 instead of 70. Which actually, I think, just about... No, it's still a... You know, that would be five small ices, whereas when it was 300, four small ices would be 280. So, a little more than... Yeah, okay, so yeah, this is, this is better. This does make smalls less good overall. But the fact that the point caps are so high, you still want to basically go for smalls as much as you can. Yeah, even with the smaller point amounts from big and small, even though there's a much bigger point cap you need of 2,000 rather than 1,600, just look at, look at this. There's been so much action going on. There's been tons of team fights, but... Every time an ice dies, people get on the move to the next ice, basically. You're not just waiting for that next one to happen. This is constant action, non-stop, move, move, move. You're not sitting still just waiting. You're not just team fighting for the sake of team fighting. You are just going. This like you might worry that this is kind of like own so hakir in that and that, like that's a king of the hill kind of thing. And this almost gets King of the Hillish, just because when if you are the first team to get to an ice, you're gonna get, probably get the most points out of it. But because it's not you capture once, you're done, you flee, you have to stay on that hill. It is actually more like King of the Hill. King of the Hill, you want to stay on the point. And I think this is. I guess that would be more C's. C's is more the most the king of the hill. Like it, it, it does its own thing. The fact that you have to fight the ice, watch for the enemies to get their points. Whereas C's, all you have to do is 
get the point, then defend it. On Sahikia, you get the point and then leave. Here, you have to get to the point, keep fighting the point, and you have to split your attention. That split of attention is key for this mode. And why I do not like the all small ice at once is you don't have to split your attention. You start the match by getting all the smalls, then you go team fight for five minutes, and then you finally start doing big ices. This is go, 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 non-stop, 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 go, go, go. And like, look, look how close it is between Maelstrom and Flames this entire match. Adders are so far behind. Like, again, this isn't because of RNG. This is just, they're doing that poorly. <laughs> they're just doing so bad. Uh, I find, I just think this is way more fun, way more fast-paced, way more attention-keeping, just, uh, uh, I, I think it's great. I think it is absolutely wonderful. I, I still don't do as much PvP as I should, I don't do as much front lines as I should, even just, I don't even do it the daily roulette half the time, but also it depends on my mood. But Shatter went from being my absolute least favorite mode. Yes, I actually liked Borderlands Ruins more. I liked doing Cartno Flats more than this. To I think this might be... I, again, this we've barely had it. It's only been like a month. This might be my favorite mode now. Shatter is just so much better. I enjoy it so much more. I, I Yeah, I just... It feels better in every way. Everything about it is just better. Also, I don't know what Adders is doing. I don't know if they're just trying to, like, decide who wins. But we were so far ahead, it didn't matter. I... I... I am quite happy with this. I am very happy with New Shatter. But yeah, that that's, that's my ramble. That's my giant long ramble. There was my stats. I didn't get many kills. The way I play, I tend to go back and forth between getting lots of kills or lots of not kills. You know, uh... And you can see I got like 2.5 million damage total between objectives and enemies. So it's not like I was doing nothing. I was doing plenty of work. Had I gotten more battle hide, those numbers would have been so much higher even. Now, I, I, I like New Shatter. I hope it keeps my attention. I hope... Massive flaws don't come out as we progress more through it. I just continue to enjoy it and love it. And yeah, that's my ramble. I hope you enjoy New Shatter too because New Shatter is uh, it's pre it's pretty good. It's pretty good. I'm going to go murder you on the battlefield now. Thanks for watching this ramble about Shatter, old and new. Uh, sorry that I was all over the place, but again, it's a ramble. I'm just trying to stream of conscious my thoughts out there of all the different things that I didn't like about Old Shatter, what I do like about New Shatter, while also trying to point out, like, yeah, it looks like Twin Adder is doing extremely horribly, and that's a big thing with RNG, but no, that just they're just doing really bad. That is not- they did not lose because RNG, that was just them. I don't even know what they were doing. Now, uh, hope you enjoyed this. I'm going to do another one for Borderland Ruins, Cartno Flats, whenever they bring that back, maybe in 6.5. I do have a match of the old version saved, so I'll be able to do, go do similar to this. And yeah, hopefully that ramble will go off well. I hope you enjoyed this, even though, you know, again, ramble. Not a lot of people like ramble. Yeah, uh, take care and may the power of unedited hogs lay waste to your enemies. And an extra special thanks to all my patrons over on Patreon, with an extra, extra special thanks going out to Eamon Al Khatib, Benjamin Hahn, Benjamin Rice, Fergie, Karsten Wayward, Ethan W, Frasian97, Jeremy Abbott, Jericho, Kevin Lowe, Mizella, Shauna, Shimmering Blaze, T Rogue, Timmy, and Zero Two. Thank you all for watching. See you for the next ramble.